I'm just gonna wait for it just a second. Just test things out, test things out. Yeah, all right, we're cool. Hello, everybody. Uh, what I wanted to do <laughs> for this stream was to do it on my computer, but it's broken. So <laughs> I had it ready. I had this. I had this whole thing ready um, a while ago. I had this ready like like early in December. I was I was going for it, and then my computer died, and so I'm doing a late. 2020 album thing when people are like not even really thinking about it right now um so that kind of sucks uh but uh you know i gotta get it done at some point and, and i want to get it done you know before before 2021 uh gets gets too far in you know but whatever i'm doing it now uh i have basically all i need to do for this is to get the images and i got them so Let's get it, baby. Um, I wanted to start off this list with some albums from the year that I thought I would like that I didn't really like that much. Um, just to, like, kind of get those, you know, because those are usually a question like, oh, did I like this? Like, I thought, have you heard this one yet? And I'm like, nah, I didn't, didn't want to put it on my list. So, um, those ones for me are Idols' is Ultra Mono. It was, um, it's a punk album. I... I loved Idols, Brutalism, and I loved Joy as an act of resistance so much. And then, you know, it kind of, like, this one, like, it came out at a point where things were, like, starting to get, like, really riled up. And they could start talking about, like, very specific things that's going on in the world. And, you know, they had a, you know, teaser song that was like, we're gonna get the fuck, we're gonna get fucking started with the shit. And then all that they kind of went on with with their themes and their and their lyrics was just like vapid platitude in this shit you know it's like they're not really saying much that's uh that's too interesting so that one was for me the biggest disappointment for the year uh i also listened to uh more jewelry that was the uh more mother and mental jewelry uh collaboration with uh true opera um you know i've seen a lot of more mother all around the way and then you know mental jewelry is a good noisy you know, maybe good noisy music. So I was like, oh, this is going to be good. And then I listened and I was like, this is pretty good. I mean, it's, it's all right. But I just, I wanted more, you know, <laughs> like, like I went into it, like thinking I would really, really love it. And I came out of it like thinking like, it's all right. Because mm. boy, do I love me some industrial. Didn't get, didn't get that much though. Uh, the next one is Freddie Gibbs and Alchemist with Alfredo. Um, a lot of people putting up their best of 2020 hip hop list put this up there usually around like seven ish, you know, five. Um, I, I'm, not, I'm not much of a Freddie Gibbs fan though, but I, I fucking adore The Alchemist. <laughs> um, you know, I, some people may say he's a bit loopy with, with how he makes his beats. I, I don't give a shit. Like, <laughs> One of my favorite rap beats is just like a two second loop that goes the whole entire Okay, that's Quilly it's Quilly Chris. Quilly Chris's style is, is super loopy and I love it. That's just why I think him as a producer, um, specifically on, you know, his Danny Brown things with um the hybrid and uh, on Triple X with uh with Monopoly. Uh I really like his like hypnotic, like repetitive style that he does. And you know that's all. Whatever. I back. I tr I sidetracked way too hard on that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the next one was uh, Food House, the self-titled. I mean, yeah. Everyone that I am like close with was like bumping Food House, and I was like, I it's it's hyper pop. Like to me, it was just like it was just like very. I I I, I'm, I don't want to say generically hyper pop, but it was like. It was like very, very um like essential hyper pop. It sounded like you know, so I was like, eh, you know, like I like hyper pop, but like this isn't really doing much in terms of like bringing something new to the table. All right, cool. Now let's go with the albums that I thought were my top twenty three because I'm twenty three years old. It was just it's a coincidence that there were twenty three of them. I just these are the ones that I wanted to talk about and put on a list and say these were the ones that I really liked. Uh, this year. Hold on. Okay, yeah, cool. Uh, so let's get it started with number 23. The Weekend, After Hours. I thought this one was alright. 
and um like I, i'm not i'm not huge on the weekend i'm not you know i wasn't huge on this album either but i liked it just enough <laughs> to consider it good enough for my list <laughs> and that makes me better than the grammys baby <laughs> so um so um but yeah it's, it, i i love the i love the general kind of thematic consistency that this this album brings to the table uh and that was just enough for me to put it on the list and just enough to put out on the list also was where's grammy spite <laughs> suck my dick uh <laughs> uh number 22 on the list we are going with dogleg melee um honestly yeah this is an, like this is also low on my list because i like I, I i did enjoy it like just enough just just enough and you know like like most of the enjoy like the reason that i want to put it on the list is to like get it on here because of the things surrounding it you know um some people that i love love this album like love it and when i listened to it i was like it's just this sounds like punk music you know it's 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 like um you know you see the music video they're performing in their garage it's it's very homemade punk music that sounds you know j like just as good as studio but it has the um it has the like intensity and the uh the spirit it's not the word that i'm looking for it has the soul of it's not the word either <laughs> But it has the soul of of like a, a punk like album made in somebody's garage. Um, so yeah, but, you know, Glass Beach loved this album, and you know, everyone there were some cool ass people I met that were like, "Dude, I really, really love Dog Leg, dude." I'm like, yeah, like it was it was pretty good. I liked it. Uh, we got number twenty one with Arca, Kick Eye, non-binary. At number 20, we have uh, Brent Fiaz with Fuck the World. Uh, this is an R&B album. Um, oh shit, I accidentally opened up Tetrio. Shit. Get that out of there. Okay. <laughs> uh, Brent Fiaz with, with uh, Fuck the World. Um, what, I, what I really like dug about this album, and going into it, I knew that this is what it was about, was that it, it was a really nice sounding R&B album that had lyrics that were not very nice sounding <laughs> like um the lyrical content of this album is very uh it's very dark ish you know or at least it's not dark but it's like it's kind of evil <laughs> talk about like uh infidelity and that kind of deal and you know the way he's speaking about his love life you know when you know hey r&b artists are going to be talking about their love lives on this out on their you know on their music and he's talking about it and it's you don't envy him you, you know it's it's not like he's flexing as as a regular r&b artist would it's 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 very it's he's talking about it honestly and you don't really feel as though it's something that you want for yourself and i think for an r&b album to do that is pretty cool um i'd say that it's a really like misanthropic kind of like narrator too over the whole thing and oh, man that is like having really misanthropic um like way like lenses to view something when making music i think is really interesting and like it, it makes for some really dark shit so you know i mean the album's called fuck the world so you can't really be too sidetracked by the by the content of what he's really saying number 19 number 19 we got luminous bodies with na 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 yeah 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 um <laughs> I can't really say too much about this album. It's just a really good, like, noise core kind of album. It's it, I, I fucking love noise rock. There's an there's a song on this album called "Fuck the Beatles." That one goes hard. Like this whole album goes like really fucking strong all the way through. Kind of reminded me of um of last year one that I watched a little too. Uh, I forgot the name of the album. Shit, but there's the song's called uh, "Garbage Man and Davis" on there. Let me let me see if I got this. Oh, cool. Crash on me. Davis. Chat Pile. Remove Your Skin, Please. Uh, was a good album. Uh, it was an EP from 2019. And, uh, yeah. 
So, Luminous Bodies, nah, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. Can't say too much about it, uh, personally, in terms of why I enjoyed it. It's just that it was really good noise rock. And that's all I can really say about it. Uh, number, are we on 18? Yeah, this is 18. Uh, this is Mac Miller's Circles. Uh, everybody said, um, more than I can say about this album already. But, you know, um, just if you haven't listened to it, it's... It's an album by an artist who, like, was soon to die, you know, and didn't know he was going to die, but, like, it's, it always happens, you know? Like, musical artists will make a, like, they'll have a posthumous release, and all their songs are just perfect for them to be, like, released after they're, they've passed, you know, like, suddenly. And that's what this album is, and that's, like, unfortunately, you know, he's... Like, rest in peace, Mac Miller. But, uh, yeah. It's a, it's a good album. And, you know, obviously, there's songs like, I don't know. I just really liked Good News when it came out. Number 17, on a, on a very different note, is Dua Lipa's Fewer Nostalgia. Um... You know I'm arrogant and I like to uh I like to try to limit my uh my selections on these lists to the uh to things that aren't <laughs> in the top 20 and I, I I even try to like limit myself to the things that are like popular with indie kids so <laughs> I'm a little shy right now to admit that I really like to do Alipa's future nostalgia this it just has it has bangers on bangers on bangers and um you know, Break My Heart is a song that I listened to, like, 50 times in a row once. At home, cause I was doing better alone, but when you said hello, I knew it was the end of it all. Oh my gosh, I could not hear that note. <laughs> um, but yeah, I really, really like this album. Um, and, uh... I have less shame to admit it because there were a lot of critics that also said they like this album, so I'm not alone in this, but, you know, if, you, if you've if you listened to this, to this album at least once or twice, it's full of bangers, you, you gotta admit it, it's full of songs that just, just are, they just wanna make you dance, they just wanna make you, they are just, they just wanna make you dance, you know what I'm saying? You put on your dancing shoes when you put this album on, man. I swear to God. It's fun. Number 16, Avalanches with We Will Always Love You. Um, so, um, there were fans um, in 2016 when Wildflower dropped. Uh, I didn't get how they felt, but now I do feel how those f uh, fans felt when... when <laughs> when Wildflower dropped because uh just, oh cause I was disappointed with this album <laughs> simple as that but um yeah the Avalanches dropped an album this year or er, uh in 2020 and I listened to it and I was just waiting for it to get good and then it got good and then it ended like really shortly after so, I'm a huge, huge Avalanches fan, and I, I, I swear I make myself like this album, because it's, I should dislike this album, and I just don't, there's some decent, decent songs on there, you know, like, 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 Oh the Sun, like, after, after that, after that song happens, it starts getting better, but, I don't know, like, I'm pretty sure at some point, I might have this like like in my biggest disappointments list of like like albums that I re like like of my albums that I really do not like that I thought I'd like. At some point I might have this this whole this album in there, you know. But whatever. I for now it'll be kind of decently in my top top of the year. Ooh, this one, Jesse Ware, what's your pleasure? Didn't enjoy this as much as a lot of other people did. Did not enjoy this album as much as other people did. I thought a lot of. I thought. 
I thought read my lips was good. I thought read my lips was good. But the rest of them, I. Other than, of course, Spotlight. Like, Spotlight is really fucking good. Spotlight is so fucking good. It was like, like for a while, I couldn't stop fucking listening to it. I almost made it my song of the year at that point. But at this point, like, like, like I can safely say that it's not the song of the year for me. I'm going to give that one to Creep You. Um, but it's a, it's a great, great, great song. And it has just enough kicking in it for me to like kind of dig the album. But I really just listen to this album for Spotlight. I, it's such a good song. Like, you know, it's just like, you know, mm, if only I could let you go, if only I could be alone, I just want to go, moonlight, sun, sun, spotlight, so good, it's so good, dude. Alright, number 14, open mic eagle with anime trauma and divorce, anime trauma divorce, I do not like any of those things. Oof. Um, I wrote a lot about this one. There's a lot. Holy shit. Like, <laughs> there's a lot that I wrote. Um, I have my notes here, yeah. Uh, but this one, I guess I have the most thoughts on, even though I kind of like this album. Like, 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 there's a lot of parts in it where it's like, he's going through some sh Like, like, Open Mike Eagle. Okay. Let me contextualize this album for people that do not know. Uh, the divorce is there, uh, I guess, and you see how it has, like, on the album art, like, like, I'm pointing one of these ways. Uh, wait, I can cheat code this. You see how it, like, you see, see, like, right, oh, fuck, fuck, okay. Like, here, there's the little plus sign. See, it was gonna be anime trauma, like, anime and trauma, like, like, for a while, I believe. Uh, he was writing this album... And then shit went south for Open Mike Eagle. Um, and cool, I get to talk about this because I like a lot of artists that were also affected in this kind of realm. Uh, I, th you know, because you know Milo and, um, and all those other people, like they ex they experienced some of the fallout here. But specifically with Open Mike Eagle, um, he got divorced and. Uh, he uh, fucking lost his show. It, it ran for one season, I believe, and they decided not to renew it for another season, uh, unfortunately for him. Um, and I like the show. It was good, you know? New Negroes. Um, can I say that? I don't know. Ugh, I feel, feel guilty already. <laughs> um... Let's see. But yeah, uh, he, his show got canceled, his wife divorced him, and then his rap collective slash potential record label disbanded completely. And uh, I heard, I, I think there's drama with that, and I don't, I, I have not gotten into it because it's, it's, it's a little hard for me to look at. Um, yeah, there's that. So... That's the context of this album, and in in an interview with um, with I think uh, the New York Times maybe, uh, like Open Mike Eagle was was he, he they said like they're like what was your like thought process with writing this album? He's like you know my therapist was telling me like just write what you feel, and I did that, and it's not usually um, in my vision you know it's not usual for me to write so personally and and so like intimately i'm not used to that and i was just like damn damn no wonder i could like never really like get super in like i could never feel like too intertwined with with what open mike eagle was saying because he like i you know when we approach creative things really 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 like extremely personally where everything is pretty much just personal expression to its core i project <laughs> and so you know like with this new approach to writing where he's like finally writing in the way that i feel like most attuned to like this is going to be uh the album that i can finally like really 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 get into open my eagle right no 
but I, uh, I did, I did get a lot of emotional attachment to the songs, you know, um, more so than I usually would. Uh, he did get a little personal with, uh, Brick Body Kids, Lady J Dreaming, you know, there were some very specific things about his personal life, especially with, um, you know, Grandma's House, uh, 95 Radios, and, um, No Selling. Like, No Selling is my favorite Open Mike Eagle song because of how, like, very specific it is with, with, uh, uh, you know, and it, it's a very good, like, like it's it's it's, it's a good song, and it, it, it re relays some information about himself with regards to how he um, behaves in ways, and I think that's, you know, but yeah, um, I just think since he's not very comfortable with this writing style, and it's, and, and you know, he's kind of wading his way through a swamp in a way where he's, like, just writing when he's really, really, like, down, <laughs> he's down bad, you know, um, like, I, I, I thought it was, you know, like, the songs are, eh. like, the chorus on, on Heda Shinji was, uh, ass on my head. <laughs> it's so bad, dude. But I like that. Like, I like the rest of that song. Like, I can forgive that really dumb chorus. And I also like the song, uh, Everything Ends Last Year, because in 2020, when I, when I hear the phrase, Everything Ends Last Year, I say, I agree. <laughs> Getting too personal here. So yeah, I guess there was a lot that I had to say about that album. Yeah. Alright, heading on to number 13. Uh, Quelle Chris, Chris Key's Innocent Country 2. Um, so like, I love Quelle Chris, except for like a majority of his work. Like, like here's the thing. I, I really, 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 really love Being You is great. I wish I could be you more often. I think that album is so good. And I love his production on uh, on the hybrid, and I love his production on Triple X. I love his production on some other guest slings that he's done on. I love some of the things that he's done on, like, Everything's Fine. But I, I, I don't know. I, a lot of his songs just seem so boring to me. And this one is also that same style that kind of bores me. But it's, 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 a, it's like it's also good in ways other than that to me. You know, like I, I really, really think that this, like, okay, there's a titanic amount of fucking features on this album, and a, like, like three times, three times, Meryl Garbus shows up on songs, and I fucking. I listened to so much Meryl Garbus last last year, with like Sister Suvi and, and like Tune Yards. I, I would I listen to like all the albums. And I love Meryl Garbus, and like, like um, I don't know. Like like that. There's fucking like five features on one song. Even there's one with like Earl Sweatshirt and like Pink Sifu. I can't even remember, dude. But. Yeah, like, like I, I listened to it the first time I got bored, and then I listened to it again, and I thought, hey, this is actually pretty good. Like, this is really good, and the production's smooth, Meryl Garbus' features is good, uh, like, Earl Swartz is good. Um, like, some songs that are just so boring, but I appreciate them anyways. And, yeah, I don't know. Like, I, I don't know if I could talk too much about this one, but I, I ended up liking it more than I initially liked it. Number 12, all right, Nekritaki Zoo. Uh, this is a Japanese alternative rock album. Uh, I saw it kind of in the realm of J-pop. Uh, I can see that. My friend Alex Koma recommended me this album, and I was like, yeah, sure. <laughs> um, there's, a, there's a song on there where I was like, oh man, like what, how, do I, how do I translate this? And the song's name was um, A Big Parade of Fluffy Animals Outside Hachiko Exit in Shibuya Station. And uh, I didn't I didn't expect that to be what the song was named, even though it was really long. But that's a very good track. It was also a great track. Um, like Yeah, Koma, he, he sent me this track, um, You Should Head North. Great song, you know. Uh, the rest of the album, fantastic. It's a very feel-good kind of album. Um with some really, really interesting, um, like, guitar riffs, and good chord progressions, the drums are solid, the vocals, oh man, the vocals are, are made by this, you know, really cute, 
um, sounding um, vocalist, and she's great. Um, I'm pretty sure, like, if you have have heard of this already, then you know what I'm talking about. But if you haven't heard what I'm talking about this album, you should give at least uh, you should head north a listen. I also like um, Big Parade of Fluffy Animals outside House Go Station. Um, okay, uh, you should head north is track three, but on YouTube you can find it really easily as you should head north. And uh, the other one is track ten, and that one starts off really somber and then randomly amps up, which I've heard in a lot of other or sorry, a few other Japanese songs that I've listened to. I'm not sure if that's a trope, but it's oof. I didn't expect it, especially with how cute the vocalist was and how it sounded initially. All right, number 11, Rina Sawayama's Sawayama. You know me. You know I love the Rina EP back in, what was that, 27, 2017, 2018? Oh, it was 2017. It had to be because I was listening to it in December of 2017. I remember that. I loved that EP. I loved that EP. I love that EP more than this album. Um... Hot take. That's a hot take. Just because I love EPs. Personal preference. I, I think short albums are cool. You get like six out songs and they're all bangers. And then you just listen to it and you're done. And you're like, wow, I want to listen to that again tomorrow. Because I like to listen to things multiple times in a row because I have autism. Anyways. Um, yeah, Rena Sawayama's uh, Sawayama was a... It's a bunch of bangers, and, um, I don't know. Obviously, like, I'm, I'm really, I, I, like, she blew up a little bit off after this. You know, I saw a lot of people, like, talking about her, including her into lists that I thought were, like, oh, now you associate her with these acts, and it's like, so, I have a little bit of my hipster arrogance on this one, you know, it's like, oh, I listened to her before she was cool, I also got denied, um, like, last second pulled off of a promotional piece that she was doing. I was gonna put my video in there and then I didn't send the email right. Um, so I got salty after that. <laughs> um, so yeah, it was that. But I'm gonna be blasting Cyber, Ho um, Cyber Stockholm Syndrome like like till the end of this day. Uh, sorry, till the end of the days that I, I live to. And uh, I'm not sure if I, like that was from Rena, so. If I could say the same about XS, or if I could say the same about Conde Garçon, like those songs, super good. And you know the rest of the album, pretty dang good too. Uh, but yeah, I think the, I think the bangers on there, Conde Garçon and, and XS, I think those are like really really strong songs. Hmm. You know, I could do a comparison to the, those two albums. You know, I'm thinking about like Time Out, Cyber Stockholm Syndrome. Um, Tunnel Vision, those are great songs, and then, what was the other one, 4040, 2028, that one, that one's a good too, but it's a nine, Ordinary Superstar, I didn't like that much though, I could find, yeah, I might have to do this one day, how does she do that? <laughs> all right uh we're going on to the top 10 baby top 10 albums uh, starting off the top 10 was king cruel's man alive and art rock project again you know same with dua lipa i was a little bit like do god like presentation wise it's gonna it's gonna be antithetical to who i am if i include king cruel into my top 10 but i couldn't deny it it was a good album like i listened to it i'm like ooh yeah um, obviously, I, I, I talk crap on, on the ooze a lot. I was like, this is, this is not that good. <laughs> like, like, this is like, um, for those that were disappointed with, with the ooze and wanted something better than that, this is the album that, that came out of that. And, ooh, baby, it's good. <laughs> like, good on Archie Marshall. He, he made some good shit. Uh... Ooh, I wrote some good things on here. I, I also really um, dig his use of like jazz rock elements that he weaves into this one. Like, like the execution of that was was better than how he might have attempted to do it on any of his previous projects. <coughs> I think I just really wanted to say that. But yeah, like like the 
the way that the guitars sound and, and for instance those are really strong things to use if you want to incorporate jazz rock elements and do whatever you're trying to do if you're if you're to ask me um i have a, I'm, a, I'm a sucker for those <laughs> like done it done it so like really short choppy like aggressive uh, uh guitar sounds but yeah it's, i fuck it you know like i'm gonna try to be humble more and just you know i like this album uh it's in my top 10. number nine we got gene dawson with pixel bath baby we got gene dawson in the motherfucking house baby you already know what's, what's going on because like gene dawson i saw him um i saw him as an opening act before um before he was really like uh on something uh if you guys saw my previous video about uh our previous stream about my top 10 of anime ew yes correct naf runs in the chat <laughs> Sip. wait hold on a second oh you you got the you got the channel points i was like did you sub to me <laughs> but yeah uh back to the thing gene dawson saw me last year i loved love 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 loved uh bad sports i thought bad sports was fantastic um so i i was like i need to let like, know when when like his next project drops drops pixel bath and then like the internet is starting to talk about him more he gets an asap rocky feature and I'm like, holy shit, Gene Dawson's about to, like, blow up, and, like, everybody's gonna talk about Gene Dawson now. And so I instantly repost my thing, like, ah, Gene Dawson, 2019, <laughs> look at guys, I, I, I knew him before, before he got popular. Um, and then, uh, and then, uh, and then I haven't really heard anything else about this project since then. But... Uh, it's still, it's still, you know, it's 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 a fantastic fucking project. Obviously, Triple Double with with ASAP Rocky is a really good song. He shows a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, lot of his talent and like his versatility on this album. Like some of his songs don't, like a lot of his songs don't sound like each other, and that's really fucking cool. Like he has a style that he really, really uh, shines through with on like a lot of the like first three tracks maybe, and then he goes like pretty pretty experimental on the, on the next ones what's the name of the fucking song oh six burst oh six burst is so weird and it, it's 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 got like this really like nice atmosphere to it like this album fantastic fantastic like second album for gene dawson and i i can only see him going up from here and please 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 make him famous someday please jeez i'm waiting all right number eight uh, Purple Moonlight Pages by R.A.P. Ferreira. Whew. Um, so that's, you know, this is Milo. This is a Milo album. Uh, if you're not aware, he changed his uh, stage name to R.A.P. Ferreira. Those are his initials. I was born speaking it. My last name means blacksmith and yours. Um, but yeah, Rory A.P. Ferreira. Uh... I remember going into this and I'm like, I kind of went into it again, like, okay, this is another Milo album. It's going to be, you know, these like, like unwarrantedly pretentious lyrics that he does. And he does like, it's like, wow, I took one semester of an English course in college and I know what you're referencing, Milo. <laughs> but yeah, um, still like. This is a very consistent uh, album from him. Like, like the the pacing and the overall quality of each song are are you know pretty good throughout. There aren't too many song like songs where I'd go back and be like, this one is bad. Like, like all of them are like listenable to great. And you know, Doldrums is fucking fantastic. Um, what else is that? Fuck, I listened to another song in there. Mythical. Mythical was so good. And they all, like, all these songs also sound pretty different, you know? There, there aren't any, like, songs that are, like, wow, this one sounded exactly like the last one. No, like, like, Laundry does not sound anything like Doldrums, and I like both songs pretty well. So, 
you know, I'm, I'm, I think this is a better stage name too, Rap Ferreira. Uh, it's, it's a bit weird to type in when you want to like steal his music, <laughs> but other than that, uh, yeah, it's, it's just like a, uh, the instrumentation and the vocal delivery as well as the thematic kind of overall theme or yeah, the overall like thematic approach that is going on here are very cohesive. And I think that's, you know, it's like this parlor side guy just like kind of going over his his things, you know. It doesn't sound like he's in a studio to me. And the instrumentation also sounds, you know, like it's live. It's a, it's a cool little experience. And <sighs> just realize what the next album is because I was going to say the same exact thing for that one. Fiona Apple, Fetch the Bolt Cutters. It sounds like she's in a parlor uh, just singing it doesn't sound like she's in a studio <laughs> uh no so yeah um first listen like everybody else i listened to it and i was like what the fuck dude this album is so good and then i listened to the songs a bit more and i'm like these are good songs but i, I just first listen i was like have you guys heard Fiona Apple's Festival? I went into so many Discord servers and just been like, hey, I've been listening to uh, Fiona Apple's Festival Cutters. Here's a link. <laughs> Listen to uh, talk to my friend who likes music a little bit. Hey, you know Fiona Apple Festival Cutters? Yeah. That was fun. And then, like, five days later, I, uh... I'd only listen to it here and there, you know? It's, it's an experience, and, you know, you experience it first time. I'm not alone in this, by the way, and I'm pretty sure I'm reverberating... A lot of what other people have said about this album in fact i've seen another one of my friends that said this and i i told him about it and he's like that's exactly how i feel I'm like so yeah anyways um yeah so like first listen it's so fucking good like top 10 for me and then it's just it's it's pretty fucking good like like after that like it's pr it's still a fucking good album without like knowing what you're going into top six these are some bangers and a half man sorry that was my discord notification not yours um so yeah number six come and ever go heart failure this is a uh this is a dance album it's kind of disco-y sounding uh in my opinion this is more of a like fun interesting sort of disco-y album than Jesse Wears what your what's your pleasure don't be mad at me don't be mad at me it's just my opinion it's my opinion also these guys have like no fucking following as far as I know I've checked all their social medias and I have more followers on every single platform for them pretty much except for maybe SoundCloud but I think even that I, like I didn't check I might have some beat there and also I don't have a big SoundCloud following but yeah this album has the song Angel, which is a really f another on repeat song for me when I initially heard it. Great song. Oh God, what a sick trick to play. Can't tell no heart, two hearts, and no soul. Good song. And like fucking dreams in love. Oh man, it's full of good each every song is i don't like i don't dislike any song in this did i dislike annihilation or was it maybe playboy and annihilation i was like eh. i might be wrong on that though i gotta re-listen <laughs> um but yeah it's just a it's a fucking good it's a good dance album that you can also listen to the like sing the lyrics so like when you go to the club, sometimes you're going for catharsis. I think this is a good album where you're trying to dance your feelings away and just sing like, you know, Oh God, what a main trick to play. And just like have your feelings with you and just go all in it. And I think I've cracked the code on why it's called Heart Failure. Like, man, like, like looking at this album, this album art sucks for me. Like, I do not like it very much. I like the aesthetic of their music video for Angel. It's very like soft uh bright colors and i thought that would be a very good way to do it but like like this this kind of like light like harsh contrast of light and like white and dark um 
like it's like okay you got like the big synths and all that and like the hard dance music and it's also a little sad lyrically or a little bit more emotionally kind of in tuned so yeah um it's kind of why that's there i guess let's figure that out right now <laughs> light and dark all right baby top five i i legitimately loved love 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 loved every album on my top five and also actually top six i love coming every year and uh my t number five album of the year we got girls which rules what's crap shit crap shit by girls which rules baby um so i'll get to this on my number one spoilers but uh the most important artist for me in 2020 and at the end of 2019 as well was Devin McCallion. Devi like I, I think my trifecta of of artists now might be complete with Devi McCallion, Danny Brown, and Grin Parrot. They all represent the three, you know, things with me. Pink, yellow, and blue. And and the three kind of The, the three things that I am shit. I'm getting too, I'm getting too abstractly inter, like intrapersonal here. <laughs> but yeah, uh, Devin McCallion is uh, the most one of the most important artists to me, and she represents the pink side of who I am. If you uh, can find your way around that general thing that I'm trying to say, you know. But um, yeah, like. Devin McCallion um, releases a ton of music, like a lot, to, and enough to keep up with it. This one was the sequel to Reddishness, which was, uh, uh, 20, I think it was 2015, and uh, that was her debut under the um, under the Girls Rituals uh, tag. So, yeah. Uh... That one was like really personal for her. It's pretty important to her. A lot of people love, you know, reddishness. Um, you know, that one had HRT on it, which was a really um, well received song. Discord. Um, and this one also just has. I don't know. This is just a Debbie McCallion album. Like she's she. Ma Discord. I should ought to mute that. Oh, it's in the poke one. Oh, cool. But yeah. Uh, it's like, uh, so what Dev, like, the reason that I really love Devin McCallion is that she's really, really, like, personal with her songs. And her m instrumentation is also super wacky. And experimental in a lot of ways and it gets like when she's with a uh, Ada Rook with uh, black dresses it's also super noisy and that's why I love black dresses but with her solo work it's really DIY sounding and it's really 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 personal and she's not very she is pretty direct about things but the way she um, vocalizes a lot of what she says tends to be Like, you know how, like, like a lot of artists, it'll sound more poetic, you know? Like, it's kind of poetic in its own way, where it's... I I trust that she's being genuine in the way that she's presenting her words. Um, but it's really, really weird. Like, n nobody speaks the way that Debbie McCallion speaks. And then, the, and the way that she speaks still somehow strikes a chord with me every single time. Maybe it's just because... You know the way she specifically says things i get it but i don't know she'll go on a track and just say i fuck up everything but you see i won't get mad at everyone else yeah i fuck up everything and i blame everybody but myself i do whatever setting myself up for failure <laughs> it's just how i tend to have fun or on this album you know she'll go everybody's fucking with me they think i'm stupid they don't think i do shit just hops on a track instantly with a three snare hits and do some like 
small base licks just initially just going on a fat and if, <laughs> and if you're used to debbie that won't come off too too crazy for you but i guess that could be a little off-putting for a lot of people this album art itself is pretty off-putting that is weird <laughs> i haven't looked at it like this since i've listened to the album and um yeah but yeah i don't know i feel bad kind of like but each yeah I don't, I don't know how to like say why each each Devi, uh, album is, is special but they honestly are all really similar in a lot of aspects like this also reminds me of mom one mom two mom three reminds me of like i'm desperate like a lot of her albums are have the same kind of atmosphere to them but they all have songs that sound different each time with you know different like like uniquely um wacky instrumentation and you know like hard like like deep in a hole from like lyrics so yeah really fucking dope this album if you couldn't tell already next one number four elucid with Sh arm and hammer with shrines which is uh it's a lucid and in billy woods sorry for for initially saying the wrong artist um so like billy woods and elucid are really really good as a duo like they're really really good as a duo billy woods is really really like he, he has this really unique flow that's just kind of all over the place it'll just kind of hop on over whenever this that 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 was a freaky shit kind of deal like that it, it it's it it follows its own path and a lucid he sounds the same on every single track that it's like run on a wave to go peace on run force run force no matter what artist he is on he'll just go like a like he's clocking in on his job and just spitting his verse you know every single time he'll hop on anything and, it'll, and he'll sound the same he'll sound like a lucid no matter what fucking beat you put on him you put on him a boom bap he'll he'll rap it his way you put on a uh you put on a weird rap he'll put on a you know he'll rap in his own way i wrote a lot for this right oh i did write a fuck ton for this okay. but yeah um you know i like art rap or like hipster rap whatever you want to say about it and for me you know last year my one of my favorite albums of the year was uh billy wood's Hiding Places with Kenny Siegel. That shown above the rest of the um, abstract hip-hop world like that I was listening to. And again, this year, it's the Billy Woods project that I'm putting as my number one. So, yeah. Oh yeah, also, like, there's so many features on this album, too. Like, F Pink Shifu, Rap Ferreira, like... Quelle, Chris, even like God damn, dude. I guess they were all like kind of just collabing with each other. <laughs> They're like, all right, guys, we gotta scramble, get ourselves back from that 2019 that we had. That one was great. <laughs> and I'm like, I agree. I also try to get collaborative efforts from people close to me uh, <laughs> this year, because uh, I'm not getting fucked up by this whole isolation thing. But yeah, um. The beats on this are really fucking weird, and as I said, you know, just just now, both rappers are really good with their specific flows on any beat. Like if you listen to the beat for Leopards, if you listen to the beat for Leopards, it's so so like hard to follow, and they both shine on it. Like, like like okay. It's like a this this like tsunami kind of deal. Like it's it's like a hurricane or it's like a storm. You know that's what these beats are. They're they're unpredictable and chaotic. Billy Woods can kind of just like jump and evade through all the like vines and willows that through the jungle that he's kind of going through that these beats are providing. And then Elucid will just kind of like surf on like this these like torrential waves no matter what it is. You know it's it's really 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 interesting to see them work with the beats that they have here because the beats. Even though they they seem really difficult to rap over, they're also, by the way, really fucking good. The beat to Leopard, um, that was Fat Albert Einstein. Oh god, dude, so good. Bitter Cassava, pretty like it's just a repetitive loop, 
and I love it. <laughs> it's so fun. And and you can you just listen like that's the starting track. Listen to that and you'll get what I mean when I say they have really specific flows and for some reason they work with every beat that they get. That one's weird. Leopard's also weird. And you can get some more toned down beats with like uh fucking Palma Horse or or no no Dead Cars. Dead Cars is so is a bit stripped down in terms of like the instrumentation. And they, they rock that one too. And that one, you know. And the features, by the way, as I mentioned uh, earlier, they're all super fucking good. Like, Pink, Sh Pink Shifu, I think, was on, like, a ton of albums that I listened to this year. Did a good job on this one, too. But, yeah. Um, also, in, like, uh, this album is sort of, like, unassuming-ish with the atmosphere. Like, like, the, out, like the, the beats, all that the the kind of the mis mixing mastering the placement of the songs on the album to make it less co like cohesive to kind of make it sound more like a mixtape or like a demo um it makes it seem really unassuming but it's also really 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 good <laughs> you know like like it presents itself as as very stripped down um while also punching harder than any other like high level studio album might have put forth, you know? I like, just look at this look at this album art, man. Look at this album art, man. Like it's just it's kind of unassuming with, with like if you like kind of look at it like from you wouldn't really see much. Stop it, Discord. Um and then you see there's a tiger and he's got a fucking gun ready to shoot at it. I don't know if that's it looks like a I don't know what kind of gun that is, but it's NYPD, so I'm going to assume that's a real bullet shooting gun. Wait, hold on, this is, this is a banger. What is this? Sanctuary Garden Earthbound. Cool. <laughs> but yeah, it's it's just, you, do, you, you could like expect very little of this album and get so much out of it, and that's what I, you know I love a good underdog story. <laughs> All right. Top three. Number three, baby. Little Dominique's Nosebleed. The album made by the Koreatown Oddity. Whew. Um. So, like, this might be the rap album that I've been looking for for my whole life. You know, ever since I got into hip-hop. Like, like, and I just wanted to listen to specifically a, a rap album that sounded like this. A whole narrative experience the whole way through which I don't really which like like yeah that's that's pretty cool but like the way the tracks flow into each other it's it's not it's not forced at all it's so seamless they go and like the narrative pieces also interrupt the song and here, here's what happens, right? When, when like somebody like does an interruption in a song, like to kind of get something in there, like say like JPEG Mafia, you know, let's like, say I never go bald like Kanye. Said I... Wait, hold up, say I never get bald like Kanye. I was like, yeah, yeah. like I honestly think that's, mm. but the interruption in here will be like, da, 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 and then it'll go right into a narrative piece. You'll be in the middle of flow narrative piece. Once one word goes in, that continues the the song, and I, th oh my god, it was it's it was so, so so cool listening to that for the first time, and I I, I was blown away from it from from the, the time that I heard that, and like, but yeah like like I, I I almost like when I heard it I wanted to put it number one but I couldn't I couldn't it would be a hot take but one day this might outplace you know. Number number uh, number two is is Jock Strap So Good City. Number one is uh, Peaceful as Hell by Black Dresses. Um, it might outplace those one day. This this album is that fucking good. It might be one of the best albums I've ever heard, and it's so unique, and it's it's so special. Like it doesn't sound like any other sort of like indie hip-hop i've ever heard in my entire life i've, I've used so many different terms I, i'm just trying to be like uh different with how i'm saying hip-hop for hipsters <laughs> like like i've never heard another album that sounds quite like it and his songwriting 
it's not it's it's not like other like like underground hip-hop rappers where it's so um it's so like unpersonal or like like indirect in a way you know like an open mic eagle might be or maybe how a uh how like a ka might be but but you know it's also not super like like even though it's it's direct in how it does it He'll, he'll talk directly about it like you know the place that i came from is called as where i came from is a place called koreatown even though the percentage of it is mostly brown like that's not that abstract you, you can get exactly what he's saying but it's saying something um like that 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 line still hit me like <laughs> um like damn i like like you can you can kind of get what he's saying with that and you can kind of infer a lot of things it's like well you know i like he probably went to the places and said like i'm from a place called koreatown and you know it's like the like when he says that he's from koreatown it's uh perceived in such a way that doesn't align with his reality that he was growing up with which is a very big theme of this whole album and <laughs> i don't know if i'm being overly like dick sucky here but yeah like that's that's kind of how i saw this um, but, hmm. Oh, yeah, when I kind of, like, went down and sat more to, like, think about it more, it, it did remind me of one project, and that was Quilly Chris's Being You is Great. I wish I could be you more often. It reminds me of one of my favorite rap albums ever. And that's the one that it sounds like. But they're different in... Sorry. They are different in um, in presentation. Um, Being you is great sounds more like an like a typical abstract hip hop album, and uh, the narrative is sort of cohesive in a way, but not. There isn't really like too big of a narrative going on there. Like there's just like kind of interludes in between songs that are more like kind of abrupt skits uh, that a typical hip hop album might have in their in their library, you know. And this one is, is more focused on the narrative. It's it's it flows a certain way. It has these different ways in which songs are told. The instrumentation is different, but the the focus on the self aspect and the kind of um you know um well like okay and then like is is like okay the focus on the self is the main thing with both of them that they share in common that I kind of got. And while um, while Quilly Chris was more of a very personal deep dive into his own self, his behavior, his psyche, uh, this was uh, the Koreatown Oddities story of his upbringing. And bringing those two together is like like having one for each is like the way in which you bring together a full picture of a person. So. So yeah, having like upbringing, you know, the environment and, you know, one's nature, you have a full picture of a person there. Um, I'm getting, I'm like, mine's up there. Let me just grab real quick. Anyways, really fucking love this album. It's the, it's the rap album that I've been looking for this whole time that I've been looking at rap. And oh my God. Oh my God. It's so good. It's so good. All right, and we're going to number two, Jock Trap's Wicked City. Who, baby? Who, baby? This album is so good, dude. Okay, you know what? Okay, and also, by the way, this is an EP. There's a lot of people out there, pretty much like every other internet like critic. On, okay, I'm not all the internet critics out there, not me included, because I'm not one of them. Um. Have, have always put, okay, here's my favorite EPs of the year, and here are my favorite albums. I'm putting the EP at number two on my albums list, baby. I like EPs. I don't care. I like EPs. I think they're great. Um, I don't, I don't think the length really matters, you know. Full-length studio album. I guess there is some merit to them where it's like, if you can pull off a full-length studio album, there's more artistic merit to that. Who cares, you know? Like, 
I'm gonna just I'm gonna just bump this shit forever. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, it's an it's in a like it's a deconstructed dance album. It's kind of an experimental pop ish sort of sound. That's <clears throat> that's kind of like a uh, a sampler pack for Jockstrap. You know, they're they're putting out these um, ideas that they have as songs into the open and seeing what sticks, <clears throat> which is. <sighs> high experimentation you know they're just like <clears throat> giving themselves the right to just experiment the way that they want to by getting these concepts out there but yeah um you have a combination of georgia ellery right jock trap is a duo with georgia ellery her voice is angelic and kind of eerie in a sense you know it's 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 it, it has this kind of eerie sense to it which may just be because i've listened to too much of jock trap and a lot of the songs are kind of off-putting with with how they are you know like i want another affair it's like ugh. but yeah and then you got taylor sky on the production and he has like um he has this like like really um gorgeous combination where he has like this acoustic instrumentation that just like is, is pretty it's clean you know the p you know if he does piano he'll do the piano really well if he wants to put in some string sections the string sections will come in really quick like on acid and just kind of go in and he'll combine it with this like like unpredictable abrupt like editing techniques that he has you know and i think that's the majority of of his uh production you know he has mo it's mostly like like acoustic instrumentation that he uh just kind of manipulates in ways that sound really weird and uh kind of go on for ways of distortion and um you know if if you uh if you were to kind of like see this this uh duo at full glance you know someone with beautiful this like girl with like beautiful beautiful voice and she's just singing like like an angel and there's some like kind of weird like undertone to it that you can't quite put a finger on right and you have this guy that has this like really strong understanding of how instrumentation works and how uh, the distortion kind of works how we can kind of like manipulate the sound in certain ways um you know it's like okay maybe we'll get like a nice little like art pop duo that makes you know really soothing songs um both of them are batshit crazy though so all their songs sound really fucking weird and fun <laughs> and it's it's uh it's a joy it's an absolute absolute joy so um what ends up happening is that their uh uh their sound is kind of convoluted with recreations of some like randomly selected songs given to a malfunctioning robot uh, that was forced to take this task of like, hey, um, take these songs and uh, like make them a reality. All right, we got these concepts in our brain. We just printed it out here, make the song, and he's like, J -j -j broke. And it's like, yo, there was like 57 errors in this. Let's just listen to it anyways. And that's how that's how it sounds. <laughs> um, also, um. I think I just described my favorite song in the album, The City. Because, like, it sounds like just like this little piano solo with, with George's making a really sad sort of, like, uh, what is it? Sentimental kind of, like, cry out there. And then all of a sudden it just goes fucking crazy and, and you know, Taylor Sky stops the piano piece puts it into a sh like glitchy um electronic kind of spasm <laughs> and Georgia Ellery just kind of uh does a hysteric response to the to the beat singing about a beaver that tries to shower or something I don't know what it is <laughs> but yeah um I tried my best to describe this album, but what it means to me is that it's just, it's, 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 it's an, it's an AI album for sure, dude. Like, 
it's technically sound with a lot of songs that just do not sound like anything else out there right now. And I just, I, I appreciate all that they can do in terms of experimentation. I think they did a fantastic job. And now, number one, everybody saw this coming. I already said that it was my number one earlier in the video. And, uh, yeah. Peaceful as Hell by Black Dresses. Peaceful as Hell by Black Dresses is the number one album of the year for Aya, baby. You already knew this was going to happen. You already knew that this album was going to be the number one album. Like, come on. Who, who, what did you expect? Did you ex did you ex did you expect something other than this? I don't think so. Um, but yeah. And yeah, uh, Andrew writes he Twitch album art looks really sick. Tbh, thank you. Uh, I'm assuming you're talking about uh, this one. It's uh, <laughs> if you uh, take a look at the album art. Uh, you can see in the in the flames the little like watermark in there. <laughs> it's um, it's a really funny and also really uh, really fun little little piece of art here. Just a little like you can see like a little like transparent camera, like here ish. <laughs> it just st yeah over the stock image of whatever the uh, Windows default thing is. But yeah. Anyways, my number one album of the year, as everyone might have been able to predict, was this album, Peaceful as Hell by Black Dresses. It is a noise rock, uh, an experimental pop album, an industrial album. Don't know specifically what to call it, but in those realms, that's kind of what you can uh, call it. Uh, is this uh, interrupting the thing? Okay, cool. Um... Yeah, as I mentioned lightly before, uh, Devin McCallion has become one of the most important uh, artists to me. And this was, you know, her big album for the year. Uh, this was the album that I thought w that like kind of blew up really well. Um, unfortunately, I didn't get this video out in time to beat Fantano. He put this at, I think, number three. And I was like, fuck, everybody's going to call me a dick writer now. Oh, well. <laughs> Um, but yeah, Peaceful as Hell is my number one album, and Creep You is my song of the year. Beautiful Friendship might be my number two song of the year. It's, like, this, these songs that I've listened to are just, like, incredibly good. I don't know. I, I don't know what to say at this point, you know? I've, I've just listened to this so much. I was in a deep, deep hole, and I listened to Beautiful Friendship, and it got me to get up out of bed for like every morning for the period of two weeks. I was in a hole of sadness and, you know, Creep You just kind of got me out of that f mental fog that I was in for a while. So there's that one too. And uh, Angel Hair was also a really fantastic song. Uh, you know, I'm a freak because I'm always freaked out. Fantastic song as well. What else is on there, man? I can't even think right now. But yeah. It's my album of the year just because I say so. And I cannot articulate any further about why this album is as good as it is because it's mostly just personal at this point. I can just encourage you to listen to this album as well as the rest of Black Dress's discography. I get a lot out of that discography. I think this is a fantastic album for them to potentially end as a band if, you know, like, unfortunately, you know, with Devi not enjoying the spotlight that got onto her, uh, they might not be a band still. But, yeah. That's, uh, that's my albums of the year. We are finished at uh, one hour and almost ten minutes. Um, thank you all for stopping by for who did stop by. I appreciate you. Enjoy the rest of your day.